Hello everyone, I am Charlie Matthews, and welcome back to another video. Now, when you think of Valve, what do you exactly think of? Do you think of Steam? Do you think Steam Deck? Do you think of whatever the hell this is? Do you think Half-Life? Do you think Half-Life 2? Do you think Half-Life Alex? Do you think of... I think they get the point. Shut up! Do you think Team Fortress? Do you think Team Fort... Okay, this is actually getting tiring. Well, when I think of Valve, I think of, in my opinion, their best series. In the year 2007, Valve released a little game called Portal, after hiring most of a group of developers who created a game named Nabacula Drop, which caught their eye. It was first released in the famously known Orange Box Collection on the 10th of October 2007. Reviews called it the most original game of 2007, although there was criticism for it having a limited storyline and short duration, it was made up for, with its humorous dialogue quite ahead of its time, original gameplay and dark story. It is now known today by some people as one of the best games ever made. Following on from this success, Valve announced Portal 2 in 2010, which then released on the 18th of April 2011. As many can imagine, the Portal game's gameplay is about, well, portals. You get a portal gun that can help you shoot blue and orange portals throughout the game. In simple terms, go through orange portal, come out blue portal, go through blue portal, come out orange portal. Throughout the game, you use the portal gun to solve test chambers in the abandoned Aperture Laboratories, while being watched by the sentient AI, GLaDOS. In my opinion, I agree with what a lot of the reviews said. The gameplay is very unique, especially for the time. The humour is funny, and the story is very dark and interesting. But I think that there is one thing from the first game that went very underappreciated by reviewers and that is the environment. As soon as you start Portal up, the game instantly shows you what the environment and atmosphere is going to be like. Desolate, lonely, almost like you're being watched. It even shows the first area in a camera-like view, with the menu occasionally turning left and right, like a camera. Once you get through the menu and start the game, you wake up in the first area, a giant glass box with a toilet, bed, and a radio, playing one of the most iconic music known from the game. Fun little fact actually, leading up to the announcement of Portal 2, Valve released a new update to the original game, adding an extra achievement where, if you took the radio to certain places throughout the game, you would unlock strange new transmissions coming from it. When decoded, these would unlock mysterious new messages and images. After getting an announcement from GLaDOS beginning your test, you walk out the portal and are instantly introduced to the atmosphere and environment of the game. Windows showing rooms hard to make out, making you think you could be being watched by scientists still in the facility. Cameras following your every move, adding to the claustrophobic and being watched aspect. Repetitive panels fill the rooms, making you feel lost and confused and maybe even think, how far does this place go? All of these little details and touches make the environment and atmosphere feel lonely but claustrophobic at the same time. A feeling of hopelessness and wonder of what could be outside, but also a feeling like someone, or maybe even something, is watching your every move. There's also these strange dens you can find throughout the game, which lore-wise are made by a man called Doug Ratman, specifically a man who worked on the AI GLaDOS, who then went rogue and nearly killed every scientist in the Aperture Laboratory's facility. 
After that, he helped the surviving scientists attach personality calls to her to keep her at bay. And then he just went on to live in the facility, giving us clues and messages about the law. These spooky and mysterious dens add to the feeling of desolateness. Is Ratman the one watching us? And if so, where is he? Is he in the weird window rooms watching us just out of our line of sight? Or something else? It's stuff like this that captivates the player, that keeps them wondering about the lore and story of this mysterious laboratory and its test subjects. What their lives were like living off of the scraps of the facility and avoiding GLaDOS and her deadly traps. It's not only the visuals and design of the test chambers that adds to the lonely feeling of the game, it's also done through the music and ambience of the game. Here is an extract from the track Self Esteem Fund from the Ost of Portal. This is honestly my all-time favourite soundtrack in the game, because it plays such a vital part in making you feel alone in this facility, with the slow and soft sound of dark ambience, filling you with feelings of dread and hopelessness in this abandoned and lonely environment. The ambience is honestly the cherry on the cake for me here. Here is a clip of the ambience from one of the test chambers in the game, and one of the final locations. When I was playing, this ambience genuinely creeped me out. The creaks of rusty metal and machinery, and the sounds of the energy balls bouncing on and off the walls that could kill a test subject in seconds. All of these details added up create one of the most lonely, desolate, but also claustrophobic and being stalked atmospheres and environments in gaming history. Even though Portal 2 stands, and probably always will stand, as my favourite game in the Portal series, and even out of every Valve game out there, because of its longer duration, even funnier dialogue, and cooler puzzles, I still think it will never capture the loneliness and claustrophobicness that the first game captured so well. And that is why I think Portal's liminal space atmospheres and environments are some of the best in gaming history. Ow! Ow! Hey, get back here! You've got to be kidding me. He escaped. Just when I was about to set him free.